This is the video lecture on gross income exclusions. Now in the previous video, we talked about the items that must be included in our gross income. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the opposite. We're gonna talk about items that we might be able to exclude from our income. In other words, not report to the IRS. First of all, we have four areas that are definitely considered to be not income. These are areas that are excluded and do not have to be reported. The first would be unrealized income. So this would be a situation where perhaps you haven't completed the work or you haven't completed a project, you haven't been paid yet. If you haven't been compensated yet, then that means the income is unrealized. So we do not have to report that to the IRS. We will not report that income until it's actually received. Second, we have self-help income. That is not actually considered to be income. So for example, an accountant doing their own tax return, or a lawyer representing themselves in a case, or a landscape artist landscaping their own lawn, or a painter painting their own house. Anything that you do as a profession but you're doing it for yourself, you don't have to report the value of that as income. Number three, rent value of personal use property. That's not actually income, that's hypothetical. So if you have, say, a vacation home that you don't rent to anyone, you don't have to report the value of that as income because that's not truly income. And then also number four, the selling price of property. The only part of that that would have to be reported would be the gain. Otherwise, you're just getting your own value back. You're just getting the actual amount that you invested back. So you're not really gaining anything. So only the gain would be considered income. Now, we're going to talk also about some specific exclusions. And these exclusions have to be talked about in more detail because there's a component of these that might actually be included. So you have to talk about these in a bit more detail. And the first one of these would be life insurance. Now from time to time, someone might receive money from a life insurance policy. If you do, the question arises, do I report that as income? It depends. It could be an exclusion then again, it could be an inclusion. So that's why it merits special uh, discussion. So first of all, the original beneficiary, the original person who is the beneficiary on a life insurance policy, to that person, the money that they receive is not taxable. So if one of you, you know, if you have a parent, for example, and they pass away, and you were the original beneficiary on the policy, the money that you receive from that is not taxed. But if the beneficiary changes, then you might have to worry about the taxes. If it changes from the original beneficiary to a subsequent beneficiary, that person does have to report the life insurance proceeds as income but they do get to exclude a couple of things. They get to exclude any premiums that they paid on the insurance policy, and they get to exclude the price that they paid for the policy. But anything over and above that would be reported as income. And then there's another option, and it's not a pleasant option to talk about, but if a person has a life insurance policy and they have been determined by a doctor to be terminally ill, they can actually cash in their own life insurance policy and receive accelerated benefits. In other words, they could receive the money while they're still living, and it would be tax-free because they're terminally ill. So those are the conditions that we would work with in the event that someone has life insurance proceeds. The next area would be scholarships. If a person receives a scholarship, is it taxable? Do I include it? Do I exclude it? Well, the rule about that is the portion of it for tuition is excluded. So any scholarship received that is for tuition, 
that is not reported, that is excluded from our income. But any portion that is for room and board, that would be taxable. So that's why we have to make that distinction in the event that we have a scholarship. And then you have fringe benefits. Sometimes people receive benefits from their job. And it could be uh, things like meals that are provided by their employer, travel expenses, lodging, awards that they receive. And these are just fringe benefits of employment. And for the most part, these are not taxable. So for example, you receive an award uh, congratulating you on 10 years of service to the company, or the company provides you with a meal during a meeting, or you're traveling somewhere so the company provides you with lodging for the night. These are fringe benefits and these are not considered taxable.